remember the days when I was young. I remember the girls I walked home with after school and how we used to stop in Keese's drugstore for a lemon phosphate. <laughs> I remember Steiner Street where I grew up and all our friends there. And I remember my family, my sister Dagmar, my brother Nels, and of course, Papa. But most of all, when I think of the days when I was young, most of all, I remember Mama. Yes, here's Mama. Brought to you by world-famous Maxwell House Coffee, the richer, mellower blend. Already a favorite in Mama's time, today more people buy and enjoy Maxwell House than any other brand at any price. Today, as always, this sign of good coffee means Maxwell House. The coffee that's always good to the last drop. And tonight, I remember something else. I remember Madame Zodiac and the time Aunt Jenny had her fortune told. The mists that hide the future begin to lift. I see many things. A long life. Happiness, and I cannot make this out. Did I rent my big front room? I see a man, a gray man, but distinguished too. Did he rent my room? I see a border... No. You mean he will not? I did not mean that. I meant that the border and the gray man are the same. I see... He also money. Well, naturally, he will have to pay in advance. This is different money. This is not from your borders. But that's all I have. I see money. It will surprise you. How much money? I do not understand. What do you mean? I see a small bit of money and a great bit of money. You mean you cannot tell how much money I'm going to get? These monies are not together. First is the small money, then is the big money. You are to get money twice. So? The first you will not expect. That will be the small money. Then will come the other. It will be big. Big. How much? The mist Close in on the future once more. I can see no more. Oh, Martha. Martha, it was wonderful. You must have you told. Throw away 50 cents. Oh, but wait until you hear what she told me. Mm. A distinguished stranger is going to rent my big front room. And I'm going to come into money. Not once, Martha, but twice I'm going to come into money. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it was right there in the crystal ball. <laughs> <laughs> I will believe it when I see it. Oh, you are just jealous because I am going to get the money and you are not. You know that is not true, yes. Oh, sure, I do. <laughs> oh, but ain't it exciting getting the money? I just hope you get your 50 cents back. <laughs> Sorting it up for the law, are you? Well, I think I'd better just run you in for that. Oh, I didn't mean it, Mr. Stack. Well, in that case, maybe I'll give you another chance. <laughs> Hiya, Dagmar. I'm fine. Say, why aren't you in school today? Well, you see, oh, well, uh, this afternoon I didn't exactly feel well. Uh, so I asked Mom if I could stay home. Oh, but now you're feeling better again, huh? I guess I am. Dagmar, you're a fraud. Oh, no, Mr. Stack. What was it? An arithmetic test? Spelling. Oh, but, but, but I did feel terrible. I'm sure you did. <laughs> Have you caught any burglars lately? Well, I just now caught six of them. Honest? Mm -hmm. They were after a box of all-day suckers right here in Keezy's drugstore. I think you're fibbing, Mr. Sack. Well, you're a fine one to talk. <laughs> oh, my gosh. 
Here comes my mother and my Aunt Janet. Well, what's all the excitement? Oh, I just don't want my mother to see me, Mr. Stack. What? Please don't tell her that you have... What's going on here? Please don't, Mr. Stack. Well, if you think fortune tellers are all fakers, you just ask Mrs. John through. Because even before she saw her husband, he was foretold to you in the tea leaves. Yeah, well, anybody can say you're going to meet a man. Yes, but some girls don't. Oh, there is Mr. Stack. Hello, Mr. Stack. <laughs> well, how do you do, lady? Hello, do you Mr. Do? Stack. Have you got gray hair, Mr. Stack? Well, not when I started out this morning. <laughs> I was just showing and to prove my, my sister and that it is very easy for a fortune teller to say that you are going to meet a gray-haired man. <laughs> well, that's not me for a few years yet. Distinguished <laughs> also, she said, Martha. Oh, well, that ain't me ever. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Good day, dear ladies. <laughs> I thought you told me you told your mother that you didn't feel well. Oh, I did. Don't she you? She wouldn't let me stay home from school anyway. Don't you know that playing hooky is a very serious thing? Oh, I know. I ought to tell your mom, Pa. Oh, please don't, Mr. Stack. I won't ever do it again. Well, I'll give you one more chance. Oh, thanks, Mr. Stack. <laughs> minute. Well, you can stay long enough to have a cup of coffee. Are you looking for the million dollars someone is going to send you? I was just looking to see if there's any mail for me. <laughs> oh, yes, one bill. And did the fortune teller tell you were going to get that too? You will see what I will get. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Beecher, he has a letter from his sweetheart. Oh, and which one of your boarders is Mr. Beecher? The lighting company. Oh. Yeah, you must not read other people's mail. Oh, I'm only looking to see who it is for. Mm. Oh, What's the it? nerve. What's the matter? Listen, having a wonderful time. Wish you were here. Mm. Would say more, but one never knows what nosy people are going to read this card. <coughs> and the nerve. <laughs> well, I'm glad you think that it is funny. But it is, Annie. <laughs> <laughs> I guess maybe it is. <laughs> Oh, 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 Martha, would you like new wallpaper out here? What is the matter with this? Well, it's three years old. It's just good, still. Well, I think I might like to change it. But the million dollars you are going to get? Nobody said I was going to get a million dollars. She said I was going to get a little money <laughs> and then a lot of money. Yeah, but I put that wallpaper in your house until I get it. That's oh, all. by you're always such a kid, you are, Martha. Because these fortune tellers always tell people what they want to know. You ask if you're going to rent your room, but she tells you you are going to rent your room. To a man with gray hair and distinguished. <laughs> well, the next time you want to hear such foolishness, I will get my dagma to do it for less than 50 cents. She makes up things, too. Madam Zodiac does not make up things. You will see. Yeah, I will be glad to see. Oh, <laughs> the nerve of that postal. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Lisa, ma'am. And if you don't mind, I would like to rent your room. So a little later that afternoon, Dagmar arrived home from <clears throat> school. How did my little girl do? Is this girl today? Did my little girl pass her spelling test? And uh, there is uh, the test paper. You always bring home the test paper, Dagmar. There is the test paper. What, Dagmar, what are you doing standing here? Oh, hello, Mama. Oh, hello, Dagmar, hello. Oh, I have the most scrumptious Mama in the whole wide world. And I have a very nice little girl. Oh, sorry, I love you, Mama. <laughs> well, you need that squeeze me so hard about it. Oh, yes, it's the nicest Mama that ever was. Are you all right, Dagmar? Oh, golly, yes, Mama. And I brought you a present. So? It's a brand new pen toy, and I bought it with my very own money. Oh, why are you bringing a present to me? It is not a birthday or Christmas. Oh, it's just because you're so nice. Well, did, did my little girl have a good day at school? Did oh, excuse me, Mama. I forgot something. Where are you going? Oh, to clean my room. I'm never, never going to be an untidy girl again. Never. <laughs> Oh, good morning, ma'am. Good morning. 
Well, may I say, ma'am, this is the most satisfactory place I have ever lived in? Oh. No, no, I mean it, Mrs. Arborg, ma'am. Why, I wouldn't trade your house, your room, or your table for the whole Rich Carlton. <laughs> in short, ma'am, you are a housekeeper par excellence. Well, it's a great pleasure to have you think so, Mr. Leeson. Well, rest assured that I do, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> well, much as I would like to stay here and spend the rest of the day having a tete-a-tete -tete with a pretty woman, <laughs> there are dollars to be made, and I want them. Yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, if there's any little extra things you'd like to have for your room, I wish you ask for them, Mr. Leeson. Well, I will indeed, ma'am. And thank you. Well, don't mention uh, oh, well, here, uh, here is some nice mail for you, ma'am. Well, I hope it is nice. Oh, I guarantee it, ma'am. I bring people luck. Well, I could use some. sign his name. Oh, what difference does it make? He was ashamed that he owed it so long. Well, I do not see anything to be ashamed about as long as he is paying it back. Well, what difference does it make whether he signed his name? I don't care who he is. All I know is that it proves that the fortune teller is right. Oh, how does it? Oh, how can you be so stubborn? Stubborn? Oh. A board that she says I am going to have. Yeah. Gray-haired mm. and distinguished. Mm. That could happen to anyone. Yes, and I suppose this twenty dollars could happen to anyone too. But that was owed to Arbor. Well, he had eighteen years to pay it. Mm. Then why all of a sudden do I get it today? <laughs> I tell you that she knew it was going to happen. She knew it. Well, this is quite a coincidence, I will admit. But well, it is no coincidence at all. Madame Zodiac knows what is going to happen, I tell you. <laughs> so I'm going to be rich. Oh, Yenny. The right in the crystal ball, she saw it. Yeah. I am going to be rich. <laughs> Just because these little things happen does not mean that will, too. Oh, it will, it will. But where's the money coming from, Yenny? Ah, but you're not going around lending money to everybody. Well, I don't know where it is coming from. Then the mist came up then. The what? The mist in the ball. The big money, Madame Zodiac saw it, and then poof. But I would not spend it until I get it, that's what I say. Well, I'm going down right now and pick out the wallpaper. Mm. Mm. Will you come with me? What would be the use of my going, Jenny? I have no crystal ball. You think it is not going to happen. <laughs> and I know that it is. Well, you will see. Mm. Goodbye. Goodbye, Jenny. Ah. I see the money still. Big money. Will I get it soon? It is getting closer all the time. It will be soon. Soon. How will I get it? Through the mist. I see the papers. A will? Perhaps it is a will. No, I will never get rich that way. My relatives as poor as church mouses. All of them. Through the mist I see papers, many papers. That is not wills, what kind of papers? I see also darkness. Oh, the mist coming up again? It is deep in the ground. I see there are riches there. Where is treasure? Deep, deep down in the ground. It is worth more than buried treasure. 
And now the mists come in. Mr. Leeson! Yes, Mrs. Arborg? So I have a telegram for you. Oh, a telegram. Well, yes. thank you, ma'am. Thank you. That was indeed most kind of you, ma'am. I hope it is not bad news. This is just about the best news that anyone could ever get, ma'am. Yeah? Yes, and with your permission, I would like to contribute a bottle or two of champagne to the supper table tonight. Champagne? Yes, indeed. This telegram has made me a very rich man. Rich, yeah? You wouldn't believe that a few pieces of paper and a little piece of ground would be worth a fortune. Now, would you? Pieces of paper? Pieces of ground? Yes, you see, I own stock in an oil well. That is what she meant. Eh? Who? The fortune teller. She said I was going to be rich, and she saw pieces of paper and money in the ground. Oh, well, I wish you the same luck with your well that I have just had with mine, ma'am. But I don't own any stock. Oh. Uh, my husband did not approve of that. He said that was the way people always got cheated out of their money. Your husband was indeed a sensible man, ma'am. If a person doesn't know anything about this business, it is better to be on the outside. It mm. abounds with swindlers. Well, uh, how did you know which stock to buy? Why, stocks are my business, ma'am. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, um, excuse me for asking. Yes? But uh, just how rich would a person get from an oil well? Well, that is rather hard to say, Mrs. Arborg. But from a well of this kind, like my well, yes. well, I will get at least $100 back for every dollar that I invest, and perhaps much more. Well, that means that if I had $100 worth of stock, I would have the... $10,000, that's right. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you know, it's really too bad that I didn't meet you sooner, ma'am. I could have let you in on this. Well, uh, have you ever heard of anything else? I wish you would tell me about it. I will indeed, ma'am. Mrs. Arbor. Yeah? Have you got $2,000? Oh, my goodness, no. Well, now, I'll tell you why I'm asking. There is a man that I know who has some stock in our well. But he's a bad man. He's a miser. He's a cheat. He would steal from his own grandmother if he had the chance. You know the type, of course. Oh, sure. And I do hate to see a man of that kind get any money out of this well. He's never done anything in his whole life to deserve it. Oh, it'd be a shame. Mrs. Arborg, I think, I think I could get this man to sell his stock to you and very cheaply, too. Yeah? Oh, but why? If it is worth so much. Because he doesn't know that it is worth so much. He hasn't seen this telegram. Oh. And so if we act quickly, Mrs. Arborg, I think I can get that stock for you. Now tell me, how much could you raise? Well, in the bank, I have just over $200. Oh, well, haven't you any way to get more? The only other thing I have is this house. Well, then why not borrow on it? You can pay it back just as soon as you get the stock. Oh, no, my husband, he never approved of such thing. Now, I'm not trying to talk you into anything at all, ma'am, believe me. It's just that I... I would like to see someone who deserves it have this stock. Yeah, but the wait. Huh? Uh, it would cost $2,000? And for every dollar that you invest, you will get at least $100 back. I guarantee it personally. That would be $200,000. You'll be on easy street, ma'am. You know what? The next time I see that fortune teller lady, I'm going to give her, yes for herself, one dollar. Oh, you're too sick to go to school again. Oh, huh? yes, Mr. Stack. <laughs> what are you doing out then? Oh, oh, my mother thought that the fresh air would do me good. <laughs> oh, she did, did she? Oh, yes, Mr. Stack. Mm. <laughs> oh, all right, Dagmar. Only, uh, one of these days, maybe I better ask her, huh? Uh, goodbye, Mr. Stack. <laughs> <laughs> You eat too fast, Nels. I'm hungry. Huh. When are you? What's it to you? You know what, Mama? What? He ate six slices of bread and butter and sugar before supper, even. But he is growing, Nels. Not as big as you are yet, Papa. Well, it will not be long now. Yeah, I hope that is enough for you all. <clears throat> How was school today, Dagma? School? Oh, Papa. Oh. Well, can I have some more, Mama? You have not finished what you have on their plate yet. Oh, golly, that's right. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs>
Hello. Hello. Hello, Jenny. Yeah. Yeah. But, 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 did you notice anything? Oh, 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 oh. You have a new hat? Yeah, and new fur. <laughs> and a move. Oh. Beautiful hat, Jenny. And a new pocketbook. Oh, yeah. so nice, too. Yeah. Oh, you have something to wear around every day. Oh, you sound as if you're coming to money, Aunt Jenny. Well, don't you laugh. I have. Yeah, Aunt Jenny? Yeah, I have an oil bell. An oil oh, well? Yeah, and for every dollar I put in, it squirts out of, a do out of the ground one hundred dollars. Yeah, but where did you get it, Jenny? You remember the new boarder, Mr. Lee Sam? Yes. Well, he is in the business of stocks, yes. and from him I'm buying them. But you have not got them yet? No, I'm getting them tomorrow. Oh, oh I do not keep around two thousand dollars in the teapot. <laughs> now, I have to raise the money. Raise it how? Uh, well, I'm taking a mortgage on my house for a few days. Oh, but are you sure this stock is good, Jenny? Oh, sure, Mr. Lisan showed me the telegram. It is one of those scotches. Yeah, but this here man you can trust, Jenny? Well, I would not have rented in my room otherwise. Oh, but you need to take a mortgage on your house. Oh, but don't you worry. <laughs> Madam Zodiac said this is just exactly what she wants me to do. You asked her? But certainly. I'm not one to take chances. Oh, I do not like to see you risk your house, Jenny. Oh, you are just mad, the both of you. Because I am getting the money and you are not. No. Ever since Madame Zodiac has told me this, you have been fussing at me and fussing at me. No, I would like to see you rich, Jenny. But more than that, I would hate to see you without anything. Well, I can look after myself. Well, will you not stop and have some supper with us? Mm -hmm. No, thank you. Yes, the same. I must go now. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Lisan is taking me to supper to the Palace Hotel. They have music there. In a fountain <laughs> with gold fishes. <laughs> uh, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. Goodbye, Jenny. Goodbye, Jenny. Gosh, won't it be wonderful if Aunt Jenny does get the money? It looks to me like she's gonna get it. That fortune teller's been right every time. What do you think, Martha? Only one thing bothers me. Yeah. That twenty dollars someone said her husband lent them. Well. But do you remember in all your life, Lars, that Arborg ever let anybody anything? That is so. And if he had, would he have died before he collected it? Mrs. Hanson. <laughs> how are you, Dagmar? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Stack. Well, how's everything, Mrs. Hanson? Oh, fine, fine. Come on, Mama. No, Mr. Stack, you're talking to us. Well, I hope the little girl is feeling better. Oh, so she has not been sick. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. she hasn't? No, no. What makes you ask that? Well, now, uh, Mrs. Uh, Hanson, I'm not Mrs. one Stack, to tell you. Mrs. Stack, the most wonderful thing has happened. Dagmar, I think I better talk to your mother. But Mr. Stack, you just got to listen. What? My Aunt Jenny has an oil well. well yeah, well, isn't that nice? You see, a Mrs. real Hanson, oil well. This fortune teller told her that she was going to get it, and then the next thing she knew, this man sold her some stuff, and now she has the no, well. No, 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 Dagmar. Mrs. Stack is not interested in what happens to Aunt Jenny. You say your sister's got an oil well? Well, she is buying some stock in one. Hmm. Now, what's this about a fortune teller? But that Madame Zodiac told my sister she was going to be rich. Who is your sister buying the stock from? Uh, Mr. Lisa, who boards at her house. Is he kind of a big, handsome fellow with wavy gray hair? Oh, you know him? No, I don't know him, but I saw a picture of him the other day. Yeah? At the station house. Mrs. Hanson, he's a well-known swindler and con man. Oh, my goodness. Has your sister bought the stock yet? No, she's doing it today. Yeah, well, we'd better get over there right away. 1995. 96, 97, 98, 99, 2000. Well, there is the money, Mr. Lisa. Well, that's fine, Mrs. Arborg. And there is the stock. Oh, I hope I'm doing the right thing. I wouldn't let you do it, ma'am, unless you were, believe me. Then will I begin to get my 200,000? Oh, you'll start getting dividends very soon now. Do you think maybe I'd better count it again? No, ma'am, I'm quite certain that you wouldn't shortchange me. <laughs> well, if it isn't Chicago Dan, the widow and orphan's friend. I don't know you, officer. What are you doing here? I want that money and that pony stock. 
Tony Stark? Now, pay no attention to him. Quiet, you. What do you mean, Tony Stark? Well, this gent and his lady friend have been swindling people from coast to coast. What lady friend? Well, she's a fortune teller. She tells the suckers that they're going to come into money, and the next thing you know, he's around selling stock. You mean he tried to hit me? That's right. For you, oh, please take it easy, lady. You have no complaint besides the $20 that I mailed to you. I even took you out to dinner. Yeah, well, suppose you just come along with me. Supper will be on the house. Well, Jenny, what do you suppose Madame Zodiac will see in her crystal ball next? <laughs> This future begin to lift. I see many things. I see... And that was the last our neighborhood saw of Madame Zodiac. Mama never will forget the look on Aunt Jenny's face when she learned her distinguished boarder was a fraud. <laughs> I remember right down the street from where Madame Zodiac made her last stand was one of our favorite stores, Ollie Johnson's Hardware, where Papa bought all his carpenter tools. <laughs> he used to always take Dagmar with him because Mr. Johnson had a cat she liked. What a wonderful array of shiny new tools he had. This time, I remember, Papa wanted a fine set of wood chisels, the best he could buy, because he always said the only tools you could depend on were the best ones, the ones you knew. They were true economy. Papa's right as rain about that. That's true of just about everything. And today, it's especially true about coffee. I expect for most of us, today's coffee situation is pretty confusing. With prices the way they are, maybe you figured you ought to buy a cheaper brand. Well, a friend of mine did that the other day, <laughs> and it was a mighty sorry experience. Grind wasn't right, had to use twice as much, and even then the flavor was disappointing. All right then, she learned the same lesson as Papa once did, about cheap tools that didn't do the job. She learned that a coffee that doesn't do the job, coffee you don't really enjoy, is no bargain at any price. But that the coffee you do enjoy is one of the biggest bargains in the world. And that's what you can expect from Maxwell House. Yes, Maxwell House is true economy, because you can count on the fullest measure of flavor and enjoyment in every steaming cup. Good to the last drop flavor, that only Maxwell House and no other coffee has. And you can depend on that flavor because we're mighty proud of it. And you can be good and sure we'll never compromise on the quality of a single pound. That's why, today, the sign of good coffee means more than ever before. It's your guarantee of unfailing flavor and satisfaction. Your guarantee that Maxwell House is true economy. So, next time you shop, remember, coffee you really enjoy is one of the biggest bargains in the world. Remember that Maxwell House is true economy because pound after pound, it's always good to the last drop. Starring Peggy Wood again next week. Presented by Maxwell House Coffee. This is CBS. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.